that everybody? Okay, um, does everybody have their lab sheet? We're gonna go to the back, well, sec the second one with all the chart the tables on it. So Dr. Lipscomb's gonna talk you through that. Okay, so I'm Dr. Brian Lipscomb. I teach a and off semester, so I'm teaching a and two right now. Um, and what we're gonna do, this is actually the first time we've tried this lab with this equipment, and the second time today, right? So, so you guys are number two, so you guys are gonna act as guinea pigs a little bit. And we're gonna try a new lab, and what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to record some EMGs. These are electromyograms. So we've got electro, that's electrical, myo, comes from what? Muscle, and gram means recording. So electrical recording of what's going on in your muscles. What we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to record from two different muscles, the bicep and the tricep. And the first thing we need to do is, you'll notice on this chart here that we're gonna have stuff that says anterior and posterior, and there's one of these windows that closed down so you can't quite see it. Which of those muscles is anterior, the bicep or the tricep? anatomical pose. So this is, the anterior is, I heard a lot of people say tricep, and it's supposed to be bicep, okay? So anterior and posterior EMGs. Now there's going to be a lot of noise in those signals, so what I've done is I've applied a filter, and so if you look at everything around you that's electrical, it basically vibrates at 60 times a second. That noise can create a lot of interference. So I just remove everything that's occurring 60 times a second, I get rid of a lot of that noise. So these bottom two things are essentially the top two signals with noise removed, right? So what you're gonna do is you're first gonna hook yourself up to the electrodes. You should have about four people, three or four people per station. We have a station, you know, on this side, if you look at the middle of the waist of each of these dumbbell shaped desks, we have two stations, right? So you need there's three or four people on one side, three or four people on the other. Go ahead and move to a station. You guys are all sort of there. All right, so you guys, yeah, one of you needs to go on each side, or probably three and three. How many do we have over here? Five, and somebody needs to come over, so it's four and four. So we don't need five people on one side. Okay. okay, so what you're going to see, as in each one of these stations, there's a recording unit. This uh, little box can receive a lot of different information from various inputs. In this particular case, we're going to be hooking up through this. Right? These are some electric wires. It can't shock you, so don't be afraid of that. Uh, it's just going to record the EMGs and then transfer that to a graphical representation on the screen. Now, you have these cords that attach to electrode pads. And so what you're going to do at your station, you should also have a little picture of a muscular arm. Right. And that is what you're going to tell you're going to move these electrodes up. The white and the brown are going to go back to the tricep. The red, green, and black are going to go to the bicep. And the green, which is your ground, that's what we're comparing everything to, is going to go between your two, your red and your black electrodes. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to put some pads on. Use some pads. You're going to put some on the tricep and some on the bicep in the appropriate areas. And then you're going to hook up the appropriate colored wire. Okay. Now, one thing you can do to reduce noise is you want to try to keep these things as untangled as possible. It's going to be a little tough because they tend to, you got a lot of them. But one thing you want to do is try to keep the ones that are going to the bicep and the tricep separately. Separate. So you want the, for example, the white and the brown, try to keep those a little bit separate from the ones that are going to the bicep and also from the ground. Okay. So you're going to hook those up to, you know, um, you know, you're going to hook those up to the muscle. You guys are going to be doing flexions and extensions with that arm, so the person getting hooked up should be able to be seated relatively close to the device so that they can you know, have some movement. We'll eventually do some stuff where they might do some dips, right? Um, use the tricep muscle a little bit, use a weight for the bicep. So think about somebody who's willing to do that. These pads are sticky, so I always say you might want to choose your least hairy member. That's always tough. Um, so if you, you know, if you're they're not too bad, so you won't lose too many hairs. Um, so let's go ahead and get you guys set up, okay? So again, just all the way things are are in the picture. Okay, so whoever's going to end needs to get your arm out. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, Dina, like Dina K about D E N A. Beamer, like Beamer. You gotta change that so it doesn't go out quite as often. So typically, you don't want it to go past your, you know, your kind of. Are your Buddy, which is that little red thing on the far right? It's on the it's on the computer screen. So way up there at the top. Yeah, there you go. So the people at Station One over here were watching their recording. So let's click on that. We should get some. Okay, let's see. All right, there we go. If you look on the chart here, if your stuff is real small, you can use these. So this is a, and, and uh, each one of these has a little thing that says plus and minus, so these can make these bigger or smaller. It's just showing, you know, representing as bigger or smaller. There's one in the middle that will sort of try to do a best fit, try to fill as much of that space as possible. So how do you slow it down again? Uh, you deal with little mountains. I always get them mixed up, but one of them is, I think, the, the two mountains is slowing down, the one mountain is speeding up. So what do I do? Yeah. So what is, 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 what
you get to run away to stop it, and we'll go the next step in a second. the first portion of this. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do some flexions and extensions. Now, uh, this is going to be without a weight, so you should be sitting there and, you know, imagine you're sitting here, you're going to flex, and then you're going to extend back to your knee. Are we pausing in between? No, well, yeah, so in a second, so you're going to hit record and you're going to start doing this. Now, you want it to make it so that we can easily see where the flexion is and where the extension is. So what you should do is do a flexion, wait a second, do an extension. Wait another second, do the next flexion. Wait a second, do the next extension. That way when we go look at your recording, it's really easy to see where the flexion is, where the extension is. All right, um, so when you, when you get ready, just hit record, and then go through a series of flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, putting a second or so between everything. Now you don't want, and try to do it naturally. This is not like really just helping your arm hard, right? This is just kind of a natural move. So this doesn't have to be flexing with one force. It's a natural move up and down. So you guys, this one looks good, right? <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to try to get an idea of the scale of what's going on here. Right, and we're going to measure things. You'll notice we have the various uh, windows there. Our, you know, some of them go from like 1.2 to mega, mi minus 1.2. If we're talking about measuring electromyograms, we're talking about measuring stuff that's going on muscle, what unit are we using? What unit do we use to measure what's going on in a neuron or muscle fiber? Well, it's, it's, it's voltage. They're small, so it's millivolts. Okay? And in fact, they're going to be smaller than if you guys, you guys are starting to talk about the action potential, right? So what, the, the top of the action potential is what? You have depolarization. How positive does that cell get? It's plus 30 millivolts. Now, what we're measuring is smaller than that because we're measuring it at a distance. Right? So we're not directly inside the muscle, right next to the muscle fiber. We're looking at it from a distance. So we won't get 30 millivolts because we're measuring it from farther away. So what we're going to do next, we're going to try to get an idea of what the size is for this. So what you're going to do, and I'm going to, it's easiest if I just show you on this one of the first groups over here, is first of all, you're going to go into analysis mode. So you're going to come over here. There's something that looks like a little uh, a little magnifying glass on a chart. I'm going to hit that. Is everybody there? Okay. You should have two red lines. One, two. Does anybody not have two red lines? They may just have one. Okay. Good. And then what I'm going to do is this sort of position. So 
Or, oh, okay, we got it. We got it. Now this is, well, how do you do? Oh, I got it. I so we're talking about, this, I'm talking about the one that you did three in a row. So that, is that a function right here? Okay. So what I want to do is figure out what... So what's going on there? Here? So we'll come back to you guys in a second. What's going on? Okay, so you're fine. I'm going to go back to this. Okay, so let me see yours. Years. So I uh, yeah, it's good. I'm gonna do this real quick to get some Hey guys, everybody watch what's happening on the screen here too, so you can see what's So what I've done here is I've played around a little bit with the scales on the bottom so we have a better chance to see the extension. It doesn't matter too much about exactly the scales, just notice these aren't exactly the same scales. But that won't matter because the computer can give you the exact measurements. So again, I'm going to go back into the data analysis mode. I have these two cursors and I'm going to try to measure the, uh, the size, the magnitude of the first collection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find a, a, a low place right before it. Okay, and then it gets a little bit hard to see there's a red line there. Then I'm going to take my second red line and move that to the high point. Like so. Okay? Now what that's going to do is it's going to tell me something about those two points. So for one thing, for example, on this top one here, the 0.210, we don't, you don't need to pay attention to that first box, but it's telling me the max versus min. So what that's telling me is the voltage here, which is high, minus where here, which is the lower one. Okay, and so that is 2.255, that peak. All right, so and so that, that's box. what you put in. That's the millivolt you put for the first one. Okay, then, okay, so that and that's associated with. That's associated with the flexor, or I should say the anterior. Okay, so we're doing a flexion.
Okay, does everybody have that first value? Actually, wait. Okay. The first one goes in this box, the second one goes in that box. Correct. It's all right. One. All right, everybody, okay. So if you guys have that, then we're going to do another one. Okay, so let's do the next function. Okay. Oh, this is the top one. Okay. The bottom one's on here. Do you, Dr. Lipscomb? Yeah. The tricep data is different. Do you need the red line? Well, we're going to get that in a second. So don't worry about the tricep data. So what you're going to see here is this is just the way. What do we do with these little erasers? The high here versus there. Okay, so let's so let's stop for a second. Everybody has their first data point. What is for extension? We get that second. Everybody have the first data value. Okay, so this is occurring during flexion, right? And the anterior muscle that we're measuring from is the bicep. At the exact same time, I can see what's going on in the lower recording, which represents what's going on in the tricep. Right, because that line is ex exactly the same time in both these scales. So here I look and say, oh, the tricep is at 0.461. So if we look at that, we're in flexion and the posterior G for that same time point, in this case for those guys, is 0.461. So you don't move that one. Yours is, yeah. I'm not sure why I didn't put the next slide. might have it wrong. You know the first box. So what I'm doing here is this one, this is shown at first. This is like this, and then two points to the Yeah. All right, who has a bigger tricep than they do have a bicep? On the on the chart. So you have bigger value, and that's the second, the lower box? Yeah. I have a bigger tricep than bicep. Yeah. So only the only group that doesn't have that is you guys. I'm not sure why that is. So are we okay? Uh, yeah, they have a lot of things. Yeah, but I have a new set. Yeah, they have a new set. Would the scales have some of them? Yeah. 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 So what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm not quite sure why that's the case with some of you guys, but we're going to try the next one. So the next one you're going to do, you're just going to move on to your next flexion. Do the same thing, right? So again, I, I just put my arrows to the flexion, and I measure before and after, right? And I do that for the second flexion. And again, I record data for the anterior and posterior, and then I do the same thing for the third flexion. So just go through and do that with the other two. So try to find your flexion. Yeah, we're going to get like more data. So we're trying to get an average. Well, it should be the same time. The 
Now, they should be just doing that. You should just be doing flexion forms, right? Not the extension. That's the next thing we're going to do. So, uh, is this the next one? Well, I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah, we can try it over. Is anybody messing? Is everybody? We can try it. Uh, if you guys have to. Okay, so, okay. All right, all right, all right. Do you, you guys want to try it again? No, we can take these numbers. Okay. We don't, I feel like they don't work, though. It's okay. It only makes sense. Theirs is the most standard. I'm not quite sure exactly why. Mine? No, no, no. <laughs> not, you. not you. You're messed up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited. I'm Their second one's good. Huh? Their yeah, one's so good. I don't know exactly what happened the first time you guys did this. But. So you might, some of the other ones might be a little bit more short. Let's see what you got in the second group. Extensions are the one that's kind of tough. There's not much real muscle. We were going this way. All right, so then you guys should take an average of those three. You guys are good. Okay, and you guys are moving on to the extension. Okay, has so everybody got their three values for that first set group of things? All right. The next thing I want you to do is um, find one of the really good flexions that you uh, extensions that you can find, and uh, look at the see if you get the value for that. So, so some of you guys have things that are a little bit odd, and uh, the flexions are a little bit harder to find because there's not as much force being used. But find the best flexion you can do and record data from that. And again, you're going to get information from the anterior and from the posterior. So average the top stuff, okay? And then the next step, did you guys go through the whole piece? Okay, so you've done like this here, right? But, yeah, well, you did the, so this this is the flexion, right? Flexion, yeah. extension, that you did the analysis? Yeah, flexion, extension, flexion. Okay. All right, so, so you guys did the whole thing. But for those of you who, who, who have done all the flexion stuff, why don't you go down to the extension, find one extension. That really works well. All right, that's the easiest to see. And then measure the magnitude of the EMG for the anterior and posterior for that one good <coughs> extension. Because that really uh, the light's so clear in that. So there's this good, right? There's no point to it. So the thing is Thank you. 
figure it's hard to see. Okay. So does everybody find an extension? So can you just repeat what you want them to repeat? Okay. So first of all, on the first row, you should have three numbers, an average for the flexion, the what's going on on the anterior, what's going on on the posterior. Does everybody have that? Okay. Then what I want you to do for the next set of boxes, the extensions are kind of hard to find. I want you to find one good example of an extension and record for that one example what you measure on the anterior EMG and what you measure in the posterior EMG. And you can put that in the big box. Is extension going to be the bottom section? Or it's not going to be. It's the, the bottom and top are telling you what muscles are involved, right? right? The, the extension is when the point at which you're putting your, your arm downwards. So it's going to be some point after, yeah. So this is flexion, that's extension, yeah. You wanted to put the, yeah, in that box. the number of what? Did you millivolts, say? right? Millivolts of what? Of what? how much force they measured on the anterior EMG for extension and how much on the posterior. So we don't do the average? Because average means average. Well, you guys can do the average on yours. Everybody else doesn't necessarily have as great a data. Oh. And I'm trying, we're just playing around with some different oh, ways to do it. Oh, yes. okay. yeah, yeah. So, so let's we'll see what we got. Yeah. I would say this is your best extension here. Yeah. 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 Well, you want to find an Just one. You guys are in good shape. Okay, first of all, um, you guys have talked about stuff, but I don't think you've talked about agonists and antagonists in class. Is that correct? Okay. So when we do something, muscles around the joint are going to act in a pair. And so we have agonist muscles. That's the, also called the prime mover. That's the muscle that's contracting. And then we have a muscle that's lengthening at the same time. So as I do a flexion of the arm, the bicep is contracting, so that is the agonist. And the tricep is lengthening, so that's the antagonist. Okay? When I do an extension, what is the agonist then? The tricep. The tricep, right? So those two things are kind of, there. It's the agonist and antagonist is the role of a muscle. And it can change, depending on the movement, it changes its roles. So when I ask you, what is the agonist during flexion, what are we talking about? Biceps, okay, and the agonist during extension, we did that. Um, now, so let's take a look at what happens to the activity of an antagonist when an agonist is active. So look at your agonist, and so you can look at flexion. So let's go with flexion. What happens when the bicep is active during flexion? What happens to this? What, how, what was the average value we have here? Let's go around. What was your average value for biceps? 
7.65, okay? Okay. What was your average value for biceps during flexion? Okay, you had uh, for uh, biceps during uh, flexion. Point seven five seven. Okay. Okay. So that makes sense that they're depolarizing, right? And we can measure something. What what kind of values did you have for the bicep? Uh, excuse me, the triceps at the same time. Were the triceps active during that time? They were less active, but they were active, right? Okay, so this is a phenomena that is called co-activation. And so whenever your muscles are moving in a natural way and you're trying to do something, the agonist and antagonist are both going to fire, right? And that's for two reasons. One, so that if I need to make a sudden change in what I'm doing, that, that other muscle is already doing stuff, right? And the other thing is, especially if you start doing things that are heavier and heavier and heavier, you need to make sure that other muscles are active so you're stabilizing the joint. So that's coactivation. You guys, a little bit later in class, are going to learn about spinal reflexes. You guys are going to learn about spinal reflexes. So when you were a little kid, you went to the doctor's office. How did they test? What was the classic way they tested your reflexes? You had the little patellar tendon reflex. They got the little hammer out. Okay. In that particular case, that's a reflex. It's not a normal movement. And so there you really do have just an agonist firing, and then you really shut down the antagonist. Right? But in normal movement, you have all this co-activation going on. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to basically kind of, you guys are going to restart this thing, but you're going to use a weight. Okay? We have 5 pounds, 10 pounds. There's a 15-pound weight in the back. That's silver. Olympic uh, dumbbell is a 15 pound, and there should be some 20 pounds floating around, right? So uh, the, we're not going to record a lot of data from this, but what I want you to do is you can play around, especially if you have more than one at your station, is do some flexions, right, with the bicep and see what happens to the magnitude of flexion when you use weight. You know, if you have a 5, a 10, a 20 at your station, you can use all of them. And you can see, you'll see what happens to the EMG as you do that. So you're going to go back to, you're going to go back to the recording uh, window by going over here. You're going to click on that to get back to the recording menu. And then, of course, you can hit record, and then you can do your stuff with the, the, the dumbbells. Everybody do that? Has everybody got that done? 
Okay, so what happened when you added weight? Everything's fired. Okay, That's more stuff is fired. What happened to the size of the EMGs? Okay. Right, and so I know some of you guys did more than one weight. What happened when you added even more weight? They got bigger. All right, what happened to the extensors when you added more weight? They got bigger, right? So um, on your chart there, I want you to just note something and, and we'll change this a little bit. So just write something in the bigger boxes about what happened, what you observed, you know, what happened to the EMGs when you used weight. Okay? Yeah, larger amplitude would, is one way you could try more, more millivolts, okay? So, well, the same amplitude is. So we're going to do one more thing and then we'll talk about what that means. Oh, actually, there is a question. You don't have. You don't have. There is a place for it underneath the chart. I didn't see that. So for both those. Why don't you have something to do for about two hours when you come back again? Because I'm just like there's so many questions. Yeah, that's that's possible. It's the first time we've done this, so it is going to talk. But I might ask you to try to do more, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just saying like. Even like with the reversal of the numbers, I want to know what to say for that. Like, I think it's just some weird odd ones. I don't know exactly why it was like that. I mean, I mean the, the average was the same. I don't know why the first one. Okay. But I know that's what something that came out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't have the screen going earlier. Okay. So um, you guys observed. Now, the last thing I want to do, you know, none of these things really directly involve the. Uh, Tricep is a particularly good agonist, so we're going to try to do something that does that. There's two different things you can do. This guy's over here. Um, two different things you can do. One, you can do a dip, right? So try to, you know, <coughs> lean back, kick your butt down, and then do a dip, right? Push back up. Or if you could do, if you've done it before, or if you know how to do it, you could um, press, right? And you don't want to use your shoulder too much, and just take it like this and just push up. Try not to use your shoulder. So for a lot of people, you would have to use a slightly lighter weight than you might think. Because right, otherwise your shoulders get too involved. So record and then see what we can. There you go. Are you recording? Yeah, well, no, what I'm doing. Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Okay. We should probably switch sets to that. So you can see it really quick. Right? So you're now using that as an So you can edit. Dips. That's a lot of numbers. Dips. Wow. Good deal. Dips. 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 The dips probably use a little more muscle because there's a lot more, you know. You might have put down there. I don't know. Or, you know, you guys are. Okay. <laughs> what time is your next class? <laughs> so, okay. so we can do everything later with the free lessons. <laughs> sure. Well, we well, maybe we can do a or something. <laughs> well, actually, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll try to get back to that. We'll try to start it. Like, so, like, is there anything we can do? So I'll be back here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we're, what happened. So obviously you guys saw that there was more, you know, EMG, a bigger EMG when you recorded from your, you know, when you had more weight involved, right, for both the bicep and the tricep. So the question that's in the middle there says physiologically, what does that represent? So what we're talking about, what's happening on a cellular level that you see a bigger or should say, you know, or a muscle level that you see a bigger signal. So there is more voltage, right? 
Why is there more voltage? What's generating the bigger voltage? More firing. More firing. The firing rates do change a little bit, but what, what's, the, what's the bigger thing that maybe is probably happening? More action potentials? Where does it, so first of all, what we're, what we're measuring is voltage, right? And we're measuring voltage because the cells are, of course, depolarizing. What happens if I try to lift more and more weight? You have what? to use more muscle. You have to use more muscle. We have to use more muscle. Muscle is made up of what type of cell? What are those things called? My muscle fibers, right? So I have to use more muscle fibers. So the more weight I lift, the more muscle fibers I have to be have become active. And those muscle fibers are each depolarizing, right? And so as more and more of them depolarize, they get a bigger and bigger signal. You probably notice, especially when you're trying to do the, I know, who is the, who's the girl with her shirt halfway off? <laughs> yeah, what, what's your name? Anna. Anna, okay. So Anna was doing a 20-pound weight with a dumbbell. You probably know, it was really tough, right? Yes. Okay, so you probably notice that your um, triceps are really active then, right? The extensor is really active. Yes. So especially as you start lifting heavier and heavier weights, that coactivation becomes more important because your body doesn't want to have something bad happen and you hurt your bicep. So the, the, you try to stabilize the joint the other side. The other thing that's going to happen is we didn't really, you know, we're looking kind of just at the arm in general, but if we could get more specific, we would find that it's not only the bicep that starts to get involved. What's the other muscle that's below the bicep? That's right deeper, that's deeper to the bicep. Kind of does very similar things. Sort of radiates over the arm. Yes, yes, right? So that muscle is what is called a uh, coagonist, right? And that means, or synergist, sometimes you call it. It does a similar activity. So if you start to lift something heavier and heavier, you're going to first recruit your bicep, then eventually you're going to start recruiting that muscle as well, right, in order to help out. So if we had electrodes that we could put in each muscle, we would see that, oh, the bicep starts, and then this muscle starts to help out at some point. Right? And so you, you, know, you start recruiting more and more muscle. And you'd also see eventually, if you get heavy enough, that all the muscles in your shoulder are going to get activated as well because you're going to try to hold your arm in a very particular position. Right? So there's a lot of stuff that happens when you start really pushing the system. Um, let's see. Does any, anybody have any questions? Yes. <laughs> When I was a trainer, we would tell them to lift agates one day and tag on the opposite day. Because instead of like upper body versus lower body, would that be more beneficial than doing upper body versus lower body? Because you're still getting activation from 